Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Verilene Nkosi. Today I'm working on the introduction to evolution. So we are at the last chapter of Life Sciences Grade 12. So like always, when we start our video, we have to show the examination guideline. So this is the examination guideline. We are on evolution. Evolution falls under paper two, which carries 54 marks. So which is a lot of marks. And you need to know that evolution is one of the challenging chapters because there is no diagram that you will be asked to label. So with evolution, you will only apply your mind. So I will try to make it easy as possible. I will, I will point out the points that you need to be aware. So what we will be looking on uh, with the introduction, uh, I will define a biological evolution and I will explain the difference between the hypothesis and the, a theory. Then I will also define the theory of evolutions and then also will be I will be looking at the evidence for evolution. So I will explain all the evidences and then also explain the sources for variation, what causes the variation of the same species. So this is the content that I will be covering on this video. So without wasting more time, let's get to it. So now we are on the introduction to evolution. So first of all, I will explain the definition of biological evolution. So biological evolution is a change in the characteristics of a species over time. So if there is a change of a characteristics or genetics material of a certain species, and then this process, we call it biological evolution. For example, if you see on this sketch, this is the human. So human started here. So this is what it is believed. It's believed that we were walking like the monkeys until we evolved after uh, millions of years. And then now we are like this. So this is what we call evolution. Because if you can see here, the characteristics of this part here is different from this one. So there was a change in between. So this change, we call it a biological evolution because this evolution takes place on a living organism. That's why we say a biological evolution. And then now let's look at the difference between hypo, hypothesis and the theory. So when we talk about hypothesis, so hypothesis, it's an educated guess about something that can be tested through research. So when we talk about a hypothesis, we talk about something that we are guessing. We just guess this is true without doing some research. So this a concept is called the hypothesis. Like if we just say, you no, know, uh, one million years ago, human were, were working like monkeys without doing some research. So this is what we call hypothesis. And then now theory, when we talk about theory, theory is an explanation of something that has been observed in nature, which can be supported by fact. So with theory, we, we talk about something having facts. So here we did some researches, uh, did some experiment, and then get all the facts. So this thing, we call it a theory. Like here, if we, we say a human before we're working like monkeys, and then we do some, if we do some experiment, do some research, find some fossils, and then compare them with the human or, or a modern human. And then if we find some uh, resemblance between the fossils and the modern human, that will tell us a uh, human, they evolved, they were looking like monkeys. So this is what theory means. And then now let's define a theory of evolution. So the theory of evolution is, that is regarded as a scientific theory since various hypotheses relating to evolution have been tested and verified over time. So that is why we say it's a theory of evolution. It's because there was a testing, there was some experiments, and then the facts were pulled out. 
So now we call it the theory of evolution. We don't call it a hypothesis of evolution. We call it the theory of evolution because there were some tests that were taken place and then the verification over time they were happening. So that's this why we call it the theory of evolution. So this is the definition of theory of evolution. So these are the notes. Please, if you are able to write, then you can write them down as I just explained them. And then now let's get to the next slide. So now we will be talking about the evidence for evolution. So when they do the test, there must be some evidence. So what are the scientists used when they do evidence? Because if we talk about something that happened maybe more than a million years ago, so it's not easy to just say this thing happened. So we need some evidence. So with the evidence, evidence number one, fossils record. So when we talk about fossils record, fossils it's in history of life as documented by fossils. So the remains of the remains or imprints of organism from earlier geographic period. So when we talk about fossils, talk about the remains that we've found now that is believed they were lived before us or many years they were alive many years ago. So for example, here is the example of a fossil. If you see here, we have a print here. So this shows that there was something big that was alive the time uh, rocks were soft. So if you see this is a print, something stepped here. So this shows that something stepped here, like the time uh, the rocks were soft. So this is the evidence that something lived here. So we cannot just say there was a dinosaur before without showing the proof. So this is the proof. So that is why I will say this is a theory. So what is the role that the fossils play as evidence? So the fossils show evidence of change over time. So they will help us to show the changes over time. So we can see what happens before or what was it before like we were coming to life or many years ago. And then they reveal transitional forms. When we talk about transitional forms, we talk about the two groups of organisms that shares uh, ancestral, like human and uh, like dinosaurs. If like we it is found that the, there is a gene or there is a fossil of dinosaurs, and then when they tested, they found the same trait in human. That is mean there was a transitional form between human and the dinosaurs. Maybe we were dinosaurs, we were we transformed from the dinosaurs before we become this modern human. So this is what the fossils do. They reveal transitional forms and then they provide clue about the rates and the trends of evolution. So they will help us to see how fast the evolution has taken place. So these are the rules that are placed by the fossils record. So now let's see another evidence that was used to test for uh, evolution, the biogeography. So when you talk about biogeography, we talk about the study of where organisms are found on Earth. So in this study, it is believed that uh, organisms that, uh, that are found at the, at the same space or at the same place on earth they tend to share ancestors so this is the study of biogeography so how does it found it helps with evolution for example here i have this catch so this is the world map before it is believed that the world map where one thing it was a one thing if you see this is africa and we have south america this is north america it was the same thing. But when they checked the fossils at the South America, they found the same uh, fossils on Africa. So that is mean there was something that was lived in Africa and the South America. So since now between Africa and South America, there is a huge ocean. So that is mean for like million years ago, Africa and South America were connected. So this is how this is the evidence 
that showed the, the evolution. So some of the evolution are found in Europe and uh, Asia. So it's another evidence that show the evolution. And then another evidence that we must know is the modification by descent. What do we mean by modification by descent? A homologous structure in different organisms indicate common ancestry. So let me explain what this mean by homologous structure. So homologous structures have the same basic plan even though they may look different or perform different functions. So like, uh, let me show you uh, some example here. This structure here, these structures here are homologous structures. This is a limb of a human or this is a hand. This is for a dog. This is for a bed. This is for a way. But if you see the way they are constructed, the way they were planned, they were planned the same. If you see this part, all of this, they have the same part. And then they have two bones which are parallel. All of them, they have a parallel two bones. And then this part here, all of them, they have this part, even if they, they function differently. But they were planning the plan, the, whoever who planned to make this uh, have the same plan. They were the same. If you see, have fingers. Dog have also look like fingers, also beads, and then the whales. So if you see these structures, we call them homologous uh, structures. And then these structures, they tend to share common ancestors. So they are from the same ancestors. So this is another evidence that was used for evolution. And then the last evidence is uh, genetics. So also genetics. Uh, in genetics, similarity and different differences provide evidence for the evolutionary relationship between species. So like if you find that uh, organism have some similarity in genetics and then this organism they tend to share some ancestry so what they check in genetics they check the sequence of gene if the sequence of gene are the same then those organism they tend to share the same ancestry the portion of the dna also their protein and their respiratory pathways so this is how this is the evidence that was used to we confirm that there is evolution. So you as a grade twelve, you need to know how to explain this these four evidences. So we talk about fossil records, biogeography, modification by descent or homologous structures, and the genetics. So these are the four evidences that were used for evolution or the sciences use this as an evidence. So now let's go to the variation. So when you talk about the variation, a variation is where we find the same organism, but they don't look the same or they are not identical. So first of all, let me define what is biological species and population. So biological species is a group of individuals that can interpret and produces a fertile offspring. So this like it just explain itself. Yeah, it's a group of individuals that they can have offspring and the offspring will be fertile to produce another offspring. So this is what we call biological species. And then population. When you talk about population, population is a group of individuals of the same species living in a specific area. So like for a for example, if we have find a group of lions, so if like there's a thousand lions, so we call them population because they are the same species and then they live in a specific area. So they are populations. Now let me explain the source of variation on the same species. What causes the species to be identi identical? So the reason why we find same organism be unidentical it's meiosis we have learned about meiosis so during meiosis in prophase one there is a process of crossing over which happens on a 
chiasma that, that part of the <coughs> chromosome so this crossing over increases the variation makes it's the one that makes the same organism look different and then another thing it's a random arrangement so like the random arrangement is during the metaphase one and the metaphase two you will find that the chromosome when they are li line themselves at the equator they just stand randomly it's what causes the same species to look different this is what the statement say when we say the source of variation so it's the cause this the thing that causes the same species or the same organism to look different so it causes by meiosis and then another thing that causes a uh, variation is the mutation so mutation it's an error of dna replication or is where we find that there is a change of gene so if there is a change of gene and this will cause the same species to look different and then another thing that can cause uh, can be a source of variation it's a random fertilization so during meiosis you will find that there is a like the gametes are different and then this different gametes so they will cause the during fertilization the like different eggs and the different sperm they fuses together and then the last thing it's a random mating so random mating it's where you find that there is a higher number of population and then different mating just happen on the population so it's another source of variation so this is the introduction of evolution so i hope everything makes sense so if you have watched this video to this far thank you very much for watching please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so if you are studying good luck with your studies thank you very much god bless you